in developing countries, we don't produce our own technology. We don't create our own biotechnology. Therefore, problems that are shared by common countries, what they do, like the United States, which by the way is not a chance, they, they planned that 100 years ago, had to create the first program, for example, of MD-PhD that was created, it was actually the university, was Johns Hopkins University, later on five years later, was Harvard University, who created these programs. When you create these programs, is when you actually then build up this translation research and you build up this, this actually <laughs> biotechnology business. But what happened when countries like Mexico, like Central America, South America, and the rest of the world, including Egypt, we don't have that possibilities. So, and that's where the problems that we are facing is going to be, it's going to be very difficult to resolve. In the next one, please. And for example, one of the things that when I founded this field of neurobiology, uh, three years ago we've been meeting for over 40 minutes, Pan-American meetings, I've been meetings with all the leaders in more than 18 countries in my region, and one of the, the things always I wanted to do is how can we prevent and eradicate viral diseases? Obviously, viruses, we can never get rid of them because 65% of our human genome is built of viruses. In fact, it's only a matter of how our immune system with viruses can match and we can get sick or we don't get sick. But the, <coughs> but the ways that when I make, and we make our list, what are the diseases that we need to fight? Someone, for example, asked me about the dengue virus. Dengue is a virus that can produce hemorrhage and people can die. In Mexico, every year, between six to 800 people die, young people. And the reason why, someone asked me one time, I said, you know, one of the reasons why dengue is still like this is because it doesn't happen in Washington, D.C. If we have 10 people dying of that disease, it will get fixed like this. But the problem happened in areas which is not problematic in other ones. And of course, our countries can create their own technology. Next one, please. So therefore, after being in academia for 25 years, what I decided to do, that the best way to help something, to bring something that makes an impact, is to create a company. That was in my personal, because I went through help my country, I created centers, I created programs, I did everything. And then, many times, very frustrated because I could never do anything more than that. So anyway, we create TrueBios. TrueBios is a company that has three major points. It's commercial, clinical trials, commercialization, and venture capital. And this, we, are, we have three offices. Today, we have 50 employees. And, our, and, and basically, our network. Next one, please. And next one. And what we try to do is to impact the things that we can create ourselves. In the next five minutes, I will talk about cervical cancer. But also, with the common partners with other people, we try to bring technologies of high, techno uh, high uh, uh, science that makes a big high impact and also to the low cost. And because of that, we, so far we have over 14 products that we are currently commercializing in the Americas. And one of them is for breast cancer. I hope uh, can we can maybe make a video. The way I just want to show you quickly in video is that this is a therapy that um, that works for for maybe we can make it bigger. Yes, this is a therapy, a simple therapy. Breast cancer. That let me hear you. What is that? Please go ahead. Cancer has become an epidemic with almost one in seven American women diagnosed during their lifetime. We need as many tools as possible to fight this epidemic. When breast cancer develops, new capillaries are formed to support the growth of the tumor. This process, known as angiogenesis, results in an increase in cellular metabolism, which causes the area. them well but but basically this technology is a very simple technology it's just based on nanotechnology that you can detect less than five millimeters on the early lesions and with that without any mammography any radioactivity 
and a woman in 15 minutes can tell if this is something I have, and the survival for that is in five years is 100%. It's uh, approved by FDA, has 90% sensitivity going to the medical centers, and we can go back to, the, to that. And, and, and this is, um, <laughs> perfect. The next one, thank you. And, and this is the reason why when I told you about the kind of technology that developing countries, we should be focused as in something the high, like na in the nanotechnology field, for example, a simpler way and then, because for example, in Mexico, we have only 4.5% of the women get screened by breast cancer. We only have less than 600 mammographers in the whole country. And we have, we, it's impossible. So when I show them this technology, they, they love it. And so we are just right now working in the moving the company in Mexico, it still is, is producing in the United States, and you will see it's a very interesting kind of a project. And the last five minutes, I hope I can finish that, uh, let me show you what we did for cervical cancer. Uh, from TrueBios, we spin up the last three years four companies. One of the companies is called Cervical Cancer, uh, Cervical Solutions for Cervical Cancer. And the problem of this, and our previous speaker, very eloquently like spoke about the epidemiology, the reasons why we develop all this. It's, it's cancer that can be prevented. The problem with this, in, <coughs> excuse me, in our developing countries, why do we have this incredible success in the United States that despite that the, the, the PASMER is not an effective and diagnostic, has been the most amazing te technique that can make a big difference in being one of the first causes of death and today is less than 4%. So this is the reason, and one of the reasons is because education. And this is very important to understand the, the field of education. Why, for example, in my region, in Latin America, we have a major problem that every two hours a woman dies of cervical cancer is because we don't have, number, there's actually three problems. Less than 10% of all women in Latin America are seen by the specialists, the obstetric and gynecologists. And that's it. And 90% of women who have can see the, the, the patient are general physicians. In Mexico, we have the European training, so after high school, people go for seven years to medical school, and that's it. So they don't have more skills, how to even make a diagnosis. So even, even if you bring the best diagnosis possible, it doesn't matter. Only it will matter for these 10% of doctors who may have the technique, is not the best. But you know, we have a window of seven years even if you don't have a test today, the next year or next year, and you will have a better accurate test. And there is many <laughs> uh, testing which can help to that. But that will help solve the problem just partially. And the reason why is because most of the women will not go to see a doctor unless they are sick. And in this cancer, because they don't feel any symptoms, so it will be too late when they come. So that's the, three, that's the reasons why we have a major cancer. So we need to come something to establish, and not even to bring the therapy, we should have, next one please, next one. We should have something that, that can help with other things. So a friend of mine that I have the honor to, to, to meet, his name is Vanderle Bagnato, he's a molecular physicist from MIT. He was one of the, the pioneers in the quantum mechanics laws. And actually, he, he's been several times candidate for the Nobel Prize. Only three of his classmates won the Nobel Prize, he didn't. But one thing that uh, Vanderlei has done is to work in how light and using the whole nanotechnology laws, how can we be effective to do a photochemical reaction? And so this is a therapy that with the porphyrin, which is part of our, 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 our any cell that we have, we have uh, these photosensitizers. For example, you know the plants. The plants, they have the chlorophyll. That's why we have the photosynthesis. The sun comes and heats it, and, and because the proteins are chlorines. Humans, we don't have, we're not green, so we don't have chlorines. But what we have is porphyrins. Next one, please. So when you, and next one, when you have light, porphyrins, you produce a singleton oxygen that is called, is one molecule of oxygen. Usually, the, the human body, we have the oxygen in three molecules. But one is only one. This is the singlet. Next one, please. And so this singlet is produced in the mitochondria. This is just to give you the idea, the cycle that the porphyrin has 
and this cycle begins with the amino lebulinic acid, which is actually a cream that we can produce, and we have a company who produces this one. But when this cream comes into the cells, they become a proporphyrin, and proporphyrin is the one that is in the sterile membrane of the mitochondria, and that's when, when you induce the, the light, you induce the oxygen toxin. Next one, please. And this is an example of how the cell will induce and start to be dying and having this specific, <coughs> specific um, pathways of apoptosis. Next one, please. But let me give you an example. Here we have already this therapy working with the skin cancer and condyloma combinator. Next one. Here is a company that we actually, we are part of this company as well. We have over 80 employees. Uh, our true bias is a member of that network. And we actually are commercializing the skin cancer. Uh, we at first started we finished over 4,000 patients who have that. Next one. Next one. And what it is is when we put the light, oh, first of all, next one. When we put the cream and you wait for three hours, in one hour, the, the normal cells will eliminate, will make the cycle, and in one hour it's gone. But the tumor cells, they retain for even two days. If you don't do anything, nothing happens. But if you put the light for 15 minutes, you can kill that tumor cell selectively. And, and only that, that it can reflect you the light, so you know exactly what the region is. So you need to do the staining, you don't need to do anything. Next one. This is an example of one, where well, you don't know, even do with the light, you still can see that. That is a normal skin cancer, a basilar carcinoma, and look two hours later. The red color is the reflection of the porphyrin inside the cells. And with the normal light of the laser, 202, 410 nanometers, you can even see with the light. It's a very simplistic way. <coughs> Next one. This is a person. This person has, for many years, this is cancer. The person, the oncologist, unfortunately, as a doctor, being myself a doctor, you know, we still are in the, oh, in the cave times thinking that everything is radiotherapy, chemotherapy. I say one day in our history, we will, we will tell that the doctors in the 20th century, they used to treat the patients in a barbaric way. But that is what is today. But tomorrow will be a different. So this is a person, for example, the oncologist, they decide not to remove his nose because they want to remove his nose, part of the arm. Imagine that, and then the boss make sure everything that, but it's going to destroy his face. Well, we given only one treatment, two grams of the cream. After 15 minutes of the therapy, one month later, that's the result. Next one. This is another case. You have the cancer in the nose. This is five days later. It's no killing. It's no burning. It's just a photochemical reaction. And because it's induced by apoptosis, Actually, it's very cosmetic-wise, it's very good. In fact, now <laughs> we open a new, a new way of treatment for cosmetic reasons, because you put a cream, you put a light, and cosmetic, you look actually uh, younger. And this is how it is. Next one. And that is something that we treat over 5,000 persons. Right now, we're moving everything to the Americas. And actually, we're bringing this product to the United States, because the United States only is approved therapy for <laughs> keratitic lesions before cancer. And so this is now <coughs> that we want to do that. Now, this is another condyloma, HPV. You know, condyloma, we have over 400 subtypes, 900 associated with cervical cancer. One of them, uh, two, several of them is condyloma cuminata. When doctors, they see a patient, they come and they see the lesions, they just cut it. But look at that, what we do. We put the, lab, the cream, we wait, and you see now in that part how regions that you, for example, here, that this one you didn't see anything, now you see them. So when you treat, next one, you can see the big difference. Next one. And that's what we came to say a few years ago. Well, here is the situation. We have a early lesions of cancer. We have a situation that is maybe associated with majority, 90% of the cases are associated with HPV. And so this therapy can be very effective. And so I said, well, one solution for this is the eradication of cervical cancer. But let me tell you why. Next one. And we come up with a new device. Our first prototype was called the DTX100. This was the therapy, the diagnosis, and the therapy. Now, remember the problem. The problem is not the diagnosis as much, really. 
The problem is the access to these therapies. And in developing countries, if you bring diagnosis without no solution, no therapy, it's not too good, actually. My breast, actually, my breast device, when I presented to the African countries, they said, don't, it's not good for Africa. Because even if you diagnose early the breast cancer, there is no solution to operate on them. So it's not good for them. <laughs> so for Mexico, next one. So what we have is, they say, here is the cervix, next one. Next one. And the cervix, next, next one. Ha oh, sorry, the bit before. Okay, thank you. Here is what we call the ectocervix, here is the endocervix, and this is the, the intermediate cells, which has been molecular phenotype, exactly where the beginning of cancer is. And the penetration of the red light by nanotechnology using 620 nanometers can penetrate the light at this level. Plus also, the, the amino lebulinic acid, we did experiments which we can increase a methyl group that the penetration go even deeper into this point. So our first clinical trials are approved, and that's why we get the approval now in this and Brazil, in Europe, CMARC, and we're moving that into the United States and Mexico this year. Already we started that. We saw a significant issues on a stage one, two, even three, that can get rid of that. And now remember, this is by apoptosis. So you are not doing surgery, you are not doing the colonization, you are not doing anything. And so, and also, the word advantage, you are making the diagnosis right there and the treatment right there. And even the small clinic. Next one. Next one. Here is the precancer lesions. Uh, next one, please. Next one. Here you put the cream. Next one. Then you wait for one hour. Next one. You put the light. Next one. And then you will induce the reactive oxygen, the photochemical reaction. Next one. And that's what we're going to get rid of the epithelium. Next one. And there is many adventures from that. Next one. And just to give you, there's another company, it's called PhotoQ for Norway. They have a product similar to like us, it's called Sevira. When we make the analysis, unfortunately, this, this kind of the technology, they're based in batteries, and the woman, they need to put it for 24 hours in their vagina. So that's why, culturally wise, it cannot be effective. But the, the reason they don't remove the cream with the light, so the problem is that they have less they have a little reflection on the light that unfortunately is not effective. But this company has already invested over $80 million. They've been in a lot of clinical trials, it's been approved now. Still getting the approval with United States as us, but uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful technology it's been working. Next one. So here is our, some of our patients, as you can see in the clinic, next one. But now we have to the next stage. This is our second effect phenotype, next one. And here you have a very diagnosis and therapy, next one. Uh, here is a patient is going to be that way. Next one. Uh, but the thing is, it's very important for the doctors ergonomically to be able to carry around. Next one. And believe me, I've been in a lot of planes carrying my big bag, my first <laughs> prototype. And I need to talk to the flight attendant, listen, you need to help me. I cannot check in. It's a noise, a little bigger, but I have to carry on because this is... And when I explain with that, every special woman, they say, no, we're part of this. No, we will help you. Let me put it in this way. But I said to my friends, we need to carry something small. Next one. And the FDA has already given us some advices. How can we move this one in a very small bag? And actually, it's like the size of the two uh, iPads. That's how big it is now. Next one. And uh, maybe you, you click there, uh, maybe. But anyway, this is, um, is it, can you make a group inside the picture, that one? I don't want so let's see. No, that's not it's just a little animation of the next one, please. But you can see here is very simple. Next one, and here is a patient. I don't know if you see the color, but if you, uh, I don't know if someone can put the light down just for a second. And then, uh, oh, thank you so much. I just want to show you for one picture before that. But here is a woman um, that we put the cream for one hour. The, the lesions already has approved by biopsy, that is the stage two. We went to that, and you can see the cervix is red, because that's the reflection of the cells where the early lesion is. And next one, next one. And after 15 minutes, I'm talking to Ms. Alejandra, next one. And we see the cervix now is green. So you can see the difference right there in the next one. Next one. And here, so this is, this is an idea that you can come and bring a company 
And I said to Latin America, if we have our companies based in our countries, we produce the company in, in, in Brazil, now it's in, in Mexico, and, and then you have this, this incredible uh, 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 system, but most important that we, and we believe, that the way you cure this disease is by attacking ill conditions. The cancer in cell one is late is going to be very difficult. But if you treat the ill relations on the cervical, dysplasia, and everybody has agreed, so you know, from the last 60 years, nothing has made any great change. But if anyone, in a general physician or a woman in public health, in a small village, I come from a very small village in my town, and I say, if I can help my doctors in that small town of 500 families that they can do this, then we can make a difference. Uh, next one. And of course, every time you need to have this partnership, you need to have these friends, the experts in, in areas, from different areas, is how can we make the difference. Thank you very much.